What's up guys, my name is Khan, and we're back today with another Scrap Mechanic dev blog. The last one came out in September, we're finally checking out our new one, it's fantastic. In the last one, the devs updated and mentioned that they were working on some mining and underground stuff in Chapter 2. And of course, we're all excited to see Chapter 2 come out, so hopefully it'll be soon. But already I can tell with this dev blog, there's some pretty sweet stuff that I, I would love to see them add just into creative even. For example, this first piece right here, look at this. Calling all mechanics, welcome to another dev blog full of fun news. We'll start with something that we've been working on for the next chapter, and then we will share some of the things that we'll be including in the upcoming challenge mode update. So kind of cool that they're also going to be updating challenge mode as well. And look at this, look at this block right here. You can already tell this block is amazing. I already know what it is, but look at this. It's a turret. It is an actual turret block that's so fantastic. You can see it working here with some drills, more drills here. We've got, I don't know what this, this, he put a, oh my god, he put like a flipper on it to yeet stuff. That's so great. And then this one's got a turret, like actual guns on it. And more guns. And then we got some actual screenshots of it. That's so cool. These are, of course, the high-tech drills for drilling the underground ores. And it looks like you can actually build stuff onto the front of the turret, which I think is fantastic. Turret Seat, a big chapter update is coming, and with it comes new interactive parts. For this one, we are excited to reveal the new Turret Seat. This has been our secret to-do list for a long time, and we finally get around to making it happen. This new part lets you drive like a normal seat while also allowing you to freely turn in all directions as well as letting you build anything you like on the front, arm it with a spud gun, or equip it with drills for precision drilling underground. These are just a few examples of all the ways you can use the new turret seat. I really hope this means that WASD still drives your vehicle, which I think is what they're talking about, and then the mouse would control your turret. If that's the case, it would be fantastic because if you can use your mouse to aim your turret, that would make spud gun turrets so much better it's always been like the hardest thing in scrap mechanic is when you do a turret even if you map it to buttons and you put the buttons to like tgfh or whatever it's still really hard to get those precise shots and make like base defense turrets but if this gives you mouse control then that's problem solved you won't need mods to do that you could just use the turret seat have it with a spud gun and it'll be fantastic so we've had a lot of fun testing this new seat and we're confident that you will have a blast using it as well honestly Add that to creative right away, I wouldn't even be mad about it. That would be so cool. I could think of a million things to build with that turret seat. Next, we've got this tiny little craft bot. It looks like a craft bot. It's actually, well, it's a circular saw bot. It's very interesting. And it's called the saw bot. We are showing off a few new helper bots in this dev blog, but this one is our new favorite. Previously, we revealed that the wedges are finally coming to Scrap Mechanic. That's right. They're doing scalable wedges too. So you can see here, we've got wedges that are like, what? two by four or something like that. So you won't just have wedges that are one by one. So you'll be able to actually change the slope, which will be nice for making stuff like ramps that go into bases and that sort of thing. You're not at these like crazy steep 45 degree angles all the time. So if you're looking to get wedges in survival, you will need to get your hands on this aggressive assistant. Just feed it any type of blocks you want and the sawbot will cut them into perfectly scalable wedges. I think this is really cool. I don't exactly understand the mechanic behind that. Like, is it going to be you feed it a block and then it outputs like a wedge block that, that you can scale? Or do you have to feed it a block and tell it the dimensions of that you want? Like, I imagine the scalable wedge blocks would consume like regular blocks do. For example, if you were to try and place a regular block here that's like two by four, that would take up eight blocks, right? So am I going to need like eight scalable wedge blocks and then drag it as well? And this block converts regular blocks to scalable wedge blocks? Like, I don't really know how that's going to work with the survival inventory system obviously with creative you know it's pretty simple you pick the block you scale it um but with survival i imagine you'll have to convert them from regular blocks to scalable wedge blocks and then you'd still need to consume like eight scalable wedge blocks to build wedges of this shape or something i'm not sure it's still really really cool it's kind of interesting that they have a bot that you have to use like a saw bot i i would call it like a carpentry bot more than anything but you have to use this bot to actually convert from one to the other, which is which is kind of cool. I get it. It's another bot. Now, of course, I would love to see automation between these bots. You know, we could obviously hook up a chest to the output and stuff like that. But, you know, automatic requests, that sort of thing would be pretty cool. Either way, it's a nice looking bot. Then, of course, we've got some more pictures of the underground. It's like a, an underground warehouse almost. Or like, I mean, it's supposed to be, I guess, an underground mining facility. But it looks like a warehouse just with a whole ton more detail. Like, look at this. I can't even... Is that looking down? It's looking down, right? And then we got this. And then 
just a ton of wires, like loose cables, because these bottom areas are gonna be filled with cable bots, right? So I don't really know. I'm assuming these cables are just background, but look at that, just, and these balls that you have to rescue. It looks like, honestly, this one is in like a, a trough that you'd knock it down or something. I'm not sure. That would be cool, actually, if there's like these little like marble run type things that you've got to hit the balls down and get them to the destination. This feels kind of like challenge mode brought into survival where you have to, you know, get the balls to the destinations. And then look at this. We've got this cool looking underground mining facility. I don't, I don't even know what half these are, but I'm really excited to see what the underground is and how it all works. Secret underground locations. A lot of work has been done on the new underground locations and we still have a few left to get done. Here are some of the new places that we've been working on in the next chapter. We can't go on into much as to what they are, um, because, you know, they want to give away secrets, obviously, and spoilers. They did say that in chapter two, I think a couple dev blogs ago, they did say they were going to finally add a quest log system. So whether or not that quest log was, you know, fully completed or at least just had some starting quests or whatever. But it will be nice to actually have some objectives in survival other than just like, you know, survive and do what you want. It will be nice to actually have some sort of a storyline that we can follow from start to finish. So they obviously aren't going to tell us much about it. I imagine there's going to be, you know, stuff we've got to get down here. I don't know. There's going to be different resources, I would assume, different you know, metals and that sort of thing. And I'm thinking this is a ball dropping thing, but like, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. But this looks like a ball puzzle to me. Like you've got to get up, hit them with your hammers, get them down the ramps and into the appropriate, you know, collection locations to activate something. That's kind of what it seems like. This one seems like it's already in a collection location. And you know, these other ones we'd have to move there. But either way, it's going to be really, really cool if they add some like puzzle aspects to the regular gameplay. Like in a warehouse right now, there's really no puzzle. It's just a maze. Find your way to the end. But if there were actual like puzzles you had to solve to open up different areas, that would add a whole new level of gameplay. All right, moving on. We've got the multi-component kit, which just looks like, uh, it looks like just a, a, a bigger component kit. But whether you're looking to upgrade your gear to top tier quality or craft some of the new items that you'll find underground, you're going to need better component kits. Introducing the new multi-component kit created to help you get the highest quality stuff that survival mode has to offer interesting so my original thought with this is that it would be like two component kits in one like it, it counts as two component kits but now i'm thinking just reading that that it's actually a like multi-tiered component kit so you have your tier one base component kits which let's say could upgrade you from level one to level three but then if you want to get your engine from level three to level five you have to use the tier two component kits which would be these ones and i'm not sure if it is going to be that way or not whether it's just these are more component kits in one like two in one or if it's going to be the kind of thing where it's like hey you actually have to have like tier two component kits to get the higher level i think it would be better if they were tier two component kits to get to the higher level, because then you can't just be like farming a base area and get all top tier gear. Just on a really basic raid, farm like two or three haybots at a time, and eventually you'll get enough component kits to have like a level five thruster. You know, it would take you forever to do it, but there's no progression. You could just sit in the starter area and get all those component kits right away. So it'd be really, really cool if they actually forced you to leave that starter area before you could get top tier stuff. And I think that's what this is going to do. But maybe I'm wrong, it might just be a quantity increase and not actually a quality increase. Although, I think a quality increase would be much, much better. Either way, super, super cool. Alright, then we've got some new bots here. This looks like a newer version of the refinery bot, but without the rollers. It's just got the, like, these teeth thing going on. And I don't even know what that is. It's like some weird expansion bot thing. Okay, it's two of them. Interesting. It's like a... Weird expand. Okay, we got two of them hooked together and then a third there. So, ore collector and. Oh, it's an ore collector! Oh, it's like a. Um, it's like a collector, the collector that collects the wooden rods and collects the, um, the metal rods and the stone rods. This is an ore collector, so it's like, I guess, ore is gonna be different than rods. It's not gonna come in rods. And then we've got this crusher for them. That's so cool. So, ore collector and crusher. The underground is filled with all new kinds of ore, uh, containing the rare and precious metals you're going to need for all your crafting and upgrading needs. See, I've wondered about this too. Right now, you can get the top metal, which is tier three metal and concrete, tier three concrete, without ever having to go underground. So I'm wondering if they're gonna change that and make it so that you have to go underground to get your metals, or 
are they gonna just add new materials that are important for you to have in the future? I, it's gonna be one of the two. Either they're gonna make it so that you can't get top tier three metal and stuff unless you go into the you know underground and mine for it, or they're gonna add completely new ores that upgrade into something ridiculously crazy and you know and then you'd have to go underground for that either way i'm really excited to see how they change the balance of it but right now you can go all the way to the end of the game without any sort of need for anything underground but anyway the underground is filled with new kinds of ore containing rare and precious metals you're gonna need blah blah in order for you to squeeze every drop of what the new chapter has to offer we have added two new tools to the mechanics repertoire the ore collector and the crusher the ore collector will gather rocks that you will mine underground and when it's full it will feed its payload into your newest helper bot the crusher by crushing the rocks into a fine powder the crusher will allow you to extract those precious rare metals like gold. Want a sneak peek at both? Take a look at these screenshots. So, precious metals like gold in a powder. So interesting. I wonder if it's going to be like you crush it into a block that's not a block. Because right now you refine into blocks. So you refine a wooden thing into wooden blocks. You refine a metal stick into metal blocks. But maybe now you'll just refine it like into a crafting material like hey you refine it into gold and you need gold to make like circuits or some nonsense like that would be kind of cool so it's no longer a block you can place it's just a crafting material that you use for other stuff in the future either way i'm excited to see how it goes i also noticed too this connector's pink i don't know if that's because they just haven't finished the art yet or if it's a different type of vacuum tube but you can see it's got a pink connector where the other ones up top here if we scroll up they still have the standard like green light connector you see that so i don't know if that pink connector means something different or if it's just unfinished or if we're gonna need like a special tubing you know to hook it up maybe it'll be different i don't know it's curious it's it's i just noticed it's got a pink connector all right and then we get into something that i'm super excited about the trash bot looks like he's still missing some colors and some textures unless he's supposed to be gray but either way look at this this trash bot it's like an actual boss fight on top of a warehouse it's fantastic which of course Boss fights will drop, you know, some unique something, I guess. But trash bot update. We haven't talked about this messy clanker for a long time, so we'll keep this short. It doesn't really stick up this dev blog. Ah, I get what you did there. It's funny because it smells because it's garbage. But we are considering not only showing it off until full release, but since many of you have been curious about our new enemy, here's a gift showing that's alive and kicking. Even he's missing a few textures. So he is missing some textures. But look at that. He's going to be a boss. You'll have different, like, attack moves that you have to dodge. It's kind of cool. Looks like he shoots out some sticky goo that you gotta dodge as well. And of course, I would assume they'll drop some- Oh my god, look, he's dropping food. He's shooting food out. I wonder if you could pick up that food to heal while fighting him. That would be so sick. There's actual, like, you can see leftover food product on the left and the right. But either way, we're gonna have to fight bosses and I'm assuming get materials. I would assume- I have no knowledge of this whatsoever. No one has told us anything. But I would assume the final goal of Scrap Mechanic is to repair your ship and leave the planet. Because, like, you know, you crash landed onto the planet in your ship. I would assume your objective is to get the tools necessary to repair your ship and leave the planet. I would assume that bosses like this are going to have some of the critical components you need to get your ship off the planet. And you have to, like, kill all the bosses before you can move on. And it's gonna be super cool, and it's gonna have a super cool progression, and I can't wait to see all the ways people use scrap mechanic physics to try and cheese bosses, like building stuff, etc. you know? I'm sure there's gonna be some cases where you could build something that forces the boss to, like, fall off the, the warehouse or some nonsense, and I know people are gonna, once the boss gets out, people start playing with it, We'll find all the ways to cheese bosses. That's just exactly what happened with the red guys as well. You know, when we first started playing, the red farm bots were super intimidating. And then we realized, you know, you can, like, throw them. You can knock them over. You can hit them with a baseball bat. And, uh, and they just get wrecked. So, really excited to see. And I'm uh, so curious to see what other bosses they add to. Uh, assuming that that's the net goal for the questing system is to you know, fix your ship and get off the planet. All right, and then we've got some outfits. Looks like a minor outfit. I like this hat. This hat looks really cool. I like the fact that this hat has a light on it. I hope that means it's an actual hat with a light that we can use at night. Because they don't... Okay, well, they show it at night. It doesn't seem to be lighting much up at night, though. That's unfortunate. But yeah, I was really hoping for that. It, ever since, like, you know, Scrap Mechanic Night, you can obviously hold a glow stick in your hand to get some light, but then you can't use your hands for other things. I would love to see a miner's hat that you can get that actually lights up the area. Maybe that's coming. Maybe that's not. I'm not sure. But, uh, either way, it would definitely be nice. But, the minor outfit, what would a scrap mechanic dev blog be without a new outfit reveal? Previously hinted at, but never shown. Here's the minor outfit, just one of the many new outfits you can find in the upcoming chapter. I'm pretty sure in the last dev blog, they did, like, a tuxedo reveal as well, and they showed a tuxedo, but... Either way, 
This outfit looks really cool. I just hope they could actually make a functional headlight. And then finally, they've got a challenge mode update, which is interesting. They haven't updated challenge mode in a long, long time. Even when survival came out, they didn't really touch challenge mode too much. So I'm kind of excited that they're updating challenge mode. So our main focus is still the next chapter, but we have a bigger update coming before that. So the challenge mode update is going to come before the chapter two update, I guess. That's what they're saying here. Um, it includes a mix of new content along with several improvements that we think a lot of you will appreciate. We aim to have this out around May this year. So that's actually really good. A couple months, they'll have a challenge mode update. That'll be fantastic. Um, keep on reading to find out some of the things that will be included. So, some new challenge mode features. This looks like just a new challenge in general. There is a challenge pack that the devs included. I think it's got like 40 challenges in it. These look like, you know, new challenges that the devs are including. Kind of neat. They've got a loop there. That's cool. So, challenge mode. Challenge mode is getting an additional 10 new awesome challenges that will conclude the master mechanic trials. Complete the final challenge to be rewarded with a very special outfit that will prove you've got the chops of a true mechanic. Oh, there's an actual reason to beat challenge mode now. Oh, that's sick. Once that comes out, I'm gonna have to beat challenge mode just to get the actual, the final outfit, because that's, that's gonna be awesome. Bots in challenge mode builder. Uh, the challenge mode builder will be getting some love with the addition of bot spawner blocks, letting you create fun and engaging custom challenges that include bots. Okay, this is kind of awesome because I've had to build those bot battle arenas in creative and i've had to use like an invi my invincible blocks mod to actually you know make invincible blocks and i've had to use the bot spawners mod but if they had bot spawners into challenge mode we could do all that without having to use either of those things and challenge mode already has invincible blocks by default you can see those bots aren't attacking any of the blocks around them because once you start a challenge the blocks all become invincible and you can't delete them so that's kind of fantastic. That just means we could actually do really, really cool arenas. And uh, depending on the aggro distance of the bots, we might be able to make them bigger. But we could build a whole arena in challenge mode. And it would actually be timed and all that stuff, which would kind of be cool. So we could actually do cool stuff. This actually is sick. I could think of a ton of things to do with bots in challenge mode. Like you could do an infinite zombie wave survival game, you know, where you got to defend your little base or whatever. And there's a lot of cool options that you could do with bot spawners in challenge mode. All right, finally, look, it's the survival mode tutorial block. I remember them showing this. It's a block that you like place down on your lift and it, you know, shows you the outlines. I think this would be really cool too if you could save your own custom things on it, which I'm, I'm sure mods will come up with that where they'll save their own things. But this is great. It's actually a tutorial for base players. So survival mode tutorial, new players might have a hard time when starting in survival mode. With that in mind, we have finally created a fun and easy onboarding experience that lets them learn the ropes. The beginning of the game now includes a series of quests to teach you the basics, as well as a new tutorial block that helps you build a basic vehicle from start to finish. That's fantastic. The quest, the questing system is something I think has been needed since day one. I honestly wish that questing came out when survival first came out because it needed at least some sort of a basic tutorial. A lot of my friends see me play scrap mechanic and they're like, oh, what's this game? and I'm like it's a building game but then I have to spend a fair amount of time just explaining them the basics or like being like hey read the handbook and learn how to build a basic vehicle but it is very confusing to people initially once you get used to the building system in scrap mechanic it's pretty easy to deal with but it does take a fair amount of a learning curve to get there and the game definitely needed some basic tutorials to be like kind of holding your hand and be like hey Go do this, go do that, get these materials, put them together, and here's a basic car. So I'm really glad that they focused on that because I think it'll keep new players interested in the game for longer. We have been working on our new set of tools for the next chapter. One of it is a cinematic camera tool that lets us create cutscenes. This I could see being super useful for YouTubers and creating thumbnails. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what it is. I noticed this picture though, like they've obviously fixed the ragdoll. Look at how many ragdolling enemies there are there. And they're not on physics one because if they were, those pistons wouldn't work. So this has to be on the advanced physics. But anyway, we'll be using this tool in survival mode as well as in challenge mode for this next update. So they've got this cinematic tool. I think it's great. You know, I'll, I'm curious to see how it works. And obviously it would be nice for YouTube video purposes, but you know, we'll see what this, what this actually does when it comes out. But optimizations, look at this. We get a lot of optimization requests, obviously, and we always try to deliver while also balancing our time with developing the new content. We are happy to say that the ragdoll simulation for knocked out characters has been greatly optimized. All mechanics that have visited the warehouse have probably experienced a performance drop when a player gets knocked out. Yes, it's insane. Or when a cow falls over walking down a freaking hill. But anyway, this issue has now been fixed, and as a bonus, it also makes a big bot raid run a lot smoother when a lot of them ragdoll at the same time. That's fantastic. We also did an optimization for character collision detection that further improves the game's performance. This already, I can tell, looks ridiculous. Like, there's so many haybots there bouncing up and down all together, so they're all ragdolling, and the game's not even lagging. Like, that's, that's great. 
Finally, they've got improved mod support. We are currently adding a ton of new exciting possibilities for scrap mechanic mod creators. These will let mod creators create their own game modes or even games within scrap mechanic. Mods can use worlds from the world builder or create completely custom worlds with a script. Mod creators can also create their own characters and write scripts to turn them into hostile or friendly NPCs. We are also opening up the possibility of adding unique outfits, weapons, tools, and more. Furthermore, an updated modding API reference page will be made available, but that's all just the beginning. There will be a lot more to give mod creators a lot of creative freedom. We will go more in depth as on this as we get closer to the update drop. We expect our mod makers to take Scrap Mechanic to a completely new level once this feature is released. To be honest, I know mods have kind of been the driving force behind Scrap Mechanic content, um you know there's not a lot of content that gets released on a regular basis from the devs and the mods kind of keep the game going that being said I, I like just thinking about like the fant mod for example i'm pretty sure they've already added like they already have the ability to put in unique outfits weapons and tools maybe i'm maybe i'm crazy um i know well okay so the, the hold on this this might be the where the confusion is getting in here the fant mod requires you to replace game files maybe they're talking about actually having workshop support for this stuff so you don't have to copy and replace game files maybe that's what they're talking about because i know if you want to run survival mods at all you have to copy and replace your scrap mechanic game files on your computer and then if you want to run a different mod you have to validate your files and replace the files with the new mod files so maybe they're talking about actual proper workshop support for all these things rather than having to replace the files but i know a lot of this stuff mod creators have been doing because you know mod creators just want to go nuts and change the game as much as they can so i'm pretty sure a lot of these things you can do only if you replace the game files and maybe that's what they're talking about they're actually going to uh, have this stuff as all workshop support so you can just subscribe to it open up your survival and be like i want to play survival with these mods and it'll be fine and i think that would be a wicked feature because i would love to have mod free and modded survival worlds you know running simultaneously anyway there's a lot more being worked on at the scrap hq unfortunately we're gonna have to put a lid on revealing those to avoid possibly spoiling the story i think the biggest thing with chapter two is they're working on the questing but obviously we're gonna get the challenge mode update first in may so that'll be interesting we'll have to beat challenge mode and get all the cool outfits and then we'll see when chapter two is coming but of course the question everyone wants to know when is the next chapter coming out uh we know that the long wait can be frustrating but we don't want to commit to a specific release date until we have made sure the next chapter is worthy of your patience and can offer many hours of quality gameplay you know it's funny about this i always think about this because it's like no matter how much content you put into it people will beat it within like a week because there are people who will do nothing but play Scrap Mechanic for a week straight and they will beat, no matter how much content it is. They, unless you put in like six years worth of content, they will beat it in like a week. So I agree that you got to make it good and you got to make sure it's, it's optimized as best you can. But, you know, I don't think worrying about how much content there is is really going to be the big deal because people will beat it very, very fast. Anyway, we will let you know as soon as we've achieved this goal. In the meantime, we wish to thank you for being understanding. That's it for this dev blog. Stay creative. And look at this. This right here tells me there's so much optimization being done to like parts and collisions. Because look at that. There's so many parts spotting and the game doesn't seem to be lagging. Now, mind you, this is a, you know, a, a GIF done after the fact, but... Either way, it looks really, really good. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. What was your favorite part of this dev vlog? Personally, I'm most excited just for the turret seat. I think the turret seat is going to be fantastic for both creative and survival. Obviously, new challenge mode update will be great. Uh, bot spawners in challenge mode is really just going to, you know, change the game completely. I'm, I can't wait to actually build some challenges in scrap mechanic challenge mode that are, you know, bot based. I had a lot of ideas. For challenges that were bot based long before like when when bots first came out but i was very disappointed to find out that you couldn't actually use those bots in the challenge mode at all so you know it'll be super cool to make challenges that are bot based in challenge mode because you have the timers and you have all the invincible blocks and there's some cool stuff you can do in challenge mode that you can't do in creative like challenge mode you could very much make a level based system that you know the player can't just come in and completely destroy whereas in creative anybody can just you know right click delete something and then you're absolutely screwed so let me know what you guys think in the comments down below i'd love to hear what your thoughts are of this new dev blog and what you think of the new update and uh hopefully we'll see some cool stuff in challenge mode in may and then hopefully you know we'll see survival chapter two before you know the end of this year i'm hoping i honestly don't know what their i think their last time they said something about maybe in 2022 but i honestly don't have any specifics and i couldn't tell you so let me know what you guys think make sure you hit that like button hit the subscribe button and as always i hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see y'all next time